worst books of 2019. Ah, smooth. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome to the worst books of 2019. These are not books that came out this year. Maybe some of them are, but that is not a hard rule for this episode of Top 5 Friday. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about my five least favorite reads of the year. Uh, these, are, these are books that you may enjoy, and if you do, that's fine. This is my opinion. Um, there's been a lot of talk online recently uh, about the pointlessness of worst of lists. Worst of lists, and <laughs> I'm all about pointless. So here we go. At number five. So at number five, we have... Diablo, no, Devil. <laughs> I keep getting it wrong, y'all. Devil um, by Kathleen Kaufman. I didn't hate this book, but I've had such a good year reading that this book is down in, when I check Goodreads, other than the Dean Koontz books that I read, this is one of the only five down there at the bottom. I gave it two stars. And the, the whole reason for that was it, it didn't live up to my expectations. There were a lot of uh, inconsistencies in the book, and it really went nowhere for me. That's about it. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave a link to my review. All these books, if I have reviews for them, will be down in the doobly-doo for you to check out. Number four. So at number four, we have another one that is not awful, but because I read so many good books this year and I quit so many bad ones, I try not to put books that I quit on worst of lists. Uh, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right to me. I don't mind reviewing them, I don't mind giving them a star rating, but I, I didn't finish them, so I, I don't feel that they need to be on this list. But this is another one that is not bad, but I disliked it a little bit more than Devil by Kathleen Kaufman, and that is The Haunting of Hill House. And I know there's going to be a lot of you going, how good dare you put Shirley Jackson down here in the bottom five? Because I didn't like it. I don't see... Uh, I'm sure there's a point to the book, because <laughs> I love pointlessness. But I'm sure there's a point, either I missed it, or the book's just dated. And I think that's the biggest problem for me, is that none of the concepts or anything uh, really especially the writing, and none of it really works in modern times, I don't feel. Uh, there's been a lot of comments um, on my review of the book that says uh, it's, a, it's an allegory for depression and mental illness and so on and so forth. I thought We Have Always Lived in the Castle was more along the lines for that, but um, I didn't like that one either. And it's, it's basically Shirley Jackson's writing that I don't care for. It's not really the story, it's just... Her, her writing bores me. There's nothing that really evokes any emotion for me. So that's number four. Number three. So at number three, we have a book that was wickedly popular this year. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, what, well, I've said this before in other reviews of popular stuff. Um, I, I really do believe that people's expectations and standards are at an all-time low. If you disagree with me, please do down there in the doobly-doo. But uh, it, it feels like it, the bare minimum is getting by and being lauded and praised. And I don't quite understand it. Um, the book had zero originality and the writing was really, really bad. If you want to see what I'm talking about, you can go over to my uh, Goodreads review of this book and check out my updates. Not in the actual review, but check out my updates for it for The Chain by Adrian McKinty. Um, there, Don Winslow, who I love, I've, I'd never read a book that, that he had recommended before, and he's been talking this book up all year, so I was super hyped for it, because I love Don Winslow stuff. It is Winslow, right? Yeah, because one time I called him Winston, and the comment section went ballistic. But Don Winslow, love his work. Um, I had no idea when I ordered the book that Stephen King had blurbed it also. Had I known that King, yes, I'm a King fanboy. But the man has terrible taste in books. Um, I don't know if it's a contractual thing with him that he has to. I mean, it's not even the same publisher. I don't believe it's Mulholland Books and Little Brown, so I don't think that's the case. Um, and it could also be a case of, you know, he's friends with Don Winslow, so, you know, he's going to like what his buddy likes. But uh, Stephen King blurbed it, and as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, no. 
what are we going to do? But yeah, this is this, if if you're looking for a better experience uh, than this book, oddly enough, the movie Cellular, <laughs> I think it has Chris Evans in it. That's the movie that I kept thinking. That's what I kept thinking about the entire time I was reading this because it felt so similar. I can't even remember Cellular, but this is, I can't. I, I think it's uh, maybe somebody got kidnapped and they have a phone and then do it has nothing to do with the premise of this book. But that's what kept popping up in my head while I was reading it. Um, but the main thing is the writing is is bad. Uh, there's some stuff in here, some metaphors, some similes that just do not work in context. They don't work at all. There's also a lot of cliched stuff. And if I'm honest, it feels like a, it feels like what it is, a non-American writing a book set in America. Um, and I, that, that killed it for me as well. Number two. Two. Okay, so on to books that I actively hated. The Chain was bad, but these last two books are books that literally, they, they pissed me off. Um, maybe not one. One I was just disappointed in. This one literally, it, it pissed me off. And I am a firm believer that if a book gives you any type of strong emotion, there's something good about it. There, there's a talking point. At least it starts discussion. So I'm going to give this book that. What I didn't like was, it's not really the message, it was the delivery, and that is The Obsoletes by Simeon Mills. Uh, th this book, uh, it was sent to me for review, and I don't know, I honestly don't know how I finished it. Uh, the book supposes that uh, cyborg, not cyborgs, androids are real, and that they should be treated fairly and equally, that, that kind of thing. Well, the problem that I had with the book and the, the thing that really sticks in my mind is the dehumanization of the people that the author is trying to write for. Um, you, you have robots instead of humans, and when you're looking at a racist or a xenophobic person or a homophobic person, they, are, they don't consider that person, the, the people that they hate, they don't consider them human. So to make those people literally not human bothers me. Um, so that, but this I don't I haven't heard anything about this book, positive or negative. Um, so you you could probably see why I why I say these things if you have uh, opinions that are really really good about something, really really bad about something. Then th this book pissed me off, but nobody's talking about it. I I feel like this book is just a meh experience, a very middle-of-the-road experience on top of the problems that I had, which makes it even worse. Because if a book gives you no feelings whatsoever and you don't even feel like talking about it, that makes a terrible book. And I just don't see too many people talking about it. Of course, um, I, I mean, you, you can't even say that it's be that's because I don't read YA, but I follow loads of YA reviewers. A.G. McDonald, I mean, there's a whole list of people that I follow just because I like them, even though they don't read the same things that I do. Um, and no one talked about this book this year. Um, if, they, if they did, I completely missed it. Uh, if you want to link me to a positive review of it, go right ahead. I just haven't found it. I'm not talking about Goodreads. I'm talking about, you know, BookTube, where, you know, it's more likely that you're going to have a, uh, a a big reaction in a comment section kind of thing. Number one. Okay, so at number one is a book that um, I will... Re I don't know if the review will be up by the time I post this or not, but uh, it, it's a book that I got from the library that was heavily requested, and it is the... It's easily my worst book of the year, and that is... Gwendy's... Magic cash grab, I mean, <laughs> Gwendy's magic feather. Um, this, I, I still, I, I'm still kind of shaken by the fact that this book even exists. Um, I've heard rumors uh, that the book is one of a trilogy. The way it ends, I don't know that it leaves open. It, it, there's nothing in this book that makes me want to read another one. Uh, despite the fact that it's a bad book, um, and an obvious cash-in on his, uh, I guess, his uh, success with Gwendy's button box with King. Uh, one of the things that uh, I, I couldn't help but notice is that Stephen King's name is on the book more than Chismar's is. And 
it feels really shady, especially because over on the side it says on the cover that uh, the sequel to Gwendy's Button Box, co-written by Stephen King. Now, uh, throw some reading comprehension in there. Of course, he's he's saying that the first book was co-written by Stephen King, but it makes it sound, if you're not paying attention, it makes it sound like Stephen King had a hand in writing this book as well. Even at the bottom, there's a introduction by Stephen King. So Stephen King's name is on the book twice. That leads to the to uh, someone who does not know better uh, thinking that it's a Stephen King book and is definitely not a Stephen King book. Nothing about the book feels like a Stephen King book, and that that's what I loved about Gwendy's Button Box was it felt like a Stephen King story. It felt it felt like Stephen King's writing in places. Same thing with Sleeping Beauties uh, that he wrote that King wrote with his son Owen. Um, but with this book, there there's no, there's no heart. There, there's no conflict is the biggest problem. You say whatever you want about it being a cash grab, but there is no conflict in the book. As soon as something negative happens, it is fixed right away. Uh, literally, the very next page, or because this book is a 333-page book that's only a four-hour audiobook and it's not abridged, you, you, can, you can tell that there's just not much, you, you know there's not much there but even the stuff that's there there's not much to it because as soon as you get done with as soon as you see the conflict like i said it's fixed on the very next page which is the very next chapter because they use really big font and very short chapters to make the book 333 pages when Gwendy's button box was under 200 and it's maybe 10,000 words shorter than this one it's not a novel in fact if you listen to the uh the audiobook experience, it says, Gwendy's Magic Feather, a novella. Yet the book is being marketed, the actual book itself is being marketed at, as a novel. So there's a bunch of shady stuff going on with Gwendy's Magic Feather. But on top of that, the main thing is the book is bad. <laughs> Nothing happens, and when it does happen, those problems are fixed super, super quickly. Um, the whole serial killer subplot comes to an end in like three three paragraphs. It's a it's a very uh, convenient ending. Well, that's my top five worst books of the year. I would love to hear about the books that you were disappointed in down there in the doobly-doo. Next week, we are going to have an entire week of positives. So if you're tired of hearing about negative stuff here on the channel, we're going to end the, uh, end, end the year on a positive note. Um, there will, and then after that, I'm going to be taking a week's vacation to recharge my batteries. I'm taking a week off of everything. Social media, uh, YouTube, all that. I won't be around on Twitter. I won't be posting things to Patreon. Nothing. So <laughs> next week, just be ready for it. After next week, the final week of the year, I will be gone for an entire week at least. I won't be back until after the first of the year. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been the Worst Books of 2019. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!